We thank you for this opportunity to come together with other brothers and sisters in Christ. And Father, I thank you that you're going to bless them. God, I thank you that you've already made the way to be able to bless your people through Jesus Christ and him alone. So Lord God, this morning we put our trust, we put our faith, we put our hope in you. And we pray that any person that come in this place today that is seeking a touch or needs just just needs the direction of the Lord in their life. God, I thank you that you are still able and willing to do that. And so meet their needs where they're at, Lord Jesus. We love you, we bless you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go ahead, guys.
more than able. We serve a God who's alive. Come on, just say the lamb that was slain. The lamb that was slain. He's alive. Forever he shall reign. He's alive. They crucified him at Calvary, but he rose in victory. He's alive. And he reigns. He's alive. With all He shall reign. He's alive. They crucified him at Calvary, but he rose in victory. He's alive. And he reigns. He's alive. With all power in his hand, he's alive. And he reigns. He's alive. He shall reign. He's alive. They crucified him at Calvary, but he rose in victory. He's alive. And he reigns. He's alive. With all power in his hand, he's alive. With all power and authority, he conquered my enemies. He put them under my feet. He rose in glory with all power and authority. It's not of anything that we've done. We can't boast about what we've done. We can only boast of the goodness of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. When you paid the price and said it was finished, Lord, you said we can come as we are. We don't have to be perfect because you are perfect. Thank you, God. 
And he's not mad at you And he's not disappointed His grace is greater still Than all of your wrong choices And he is He is full of mercy He is ever kind Here is invitation His arms are open wide And you With all your broken pieces, all your shameful scars, the pain you hold in your heart, bring it all to Jesus. You can come as you are. He's not mad. grace is greater still than all of your wrong choices. He is, he is full of mercy. He is ever kind. Here is invitation. Yo 
just want to dwell on who you are, Lord. I just want to wait on you, my God. And I just want to dwell on who you are, Lord. I just want to dwell on who you are, God. I've just got to dwell on who you are, Lord, who you are. Beautiful, beautiful, oh, I am lost for more to say.
before we get ready to take up offering, I, I, I just want to let me just say a few things. When it comes to the topic give topic of giving, I know people get a little anxious in the church and get a little rowdy in the church. And uh, to be honest with you, when I got saved at the age of nineteen, giving never was a big issue to me. I mean, it was just like that's what you did. So I started as a, a young man giving. And probably one of my biggest goals here at the, for me as a pastor, if for you know, you know, with the Lord is more given as He leads me. Ten percent is base. You know what my goal is? My goal is to be the largest contributor at Hosanna Family Worship Center or whatever it is. That's my goal. In other words, I want to be able to outgive all of y'all. One of the main reasons I want to be able to do that is because I want I want to be a good example. Uh, of what the scripture teaches amen and uh so that's one of my goals for this year and i hope i'm 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 borderline and i think i'm in the top five right now and i'm going to pass all some of these other jokers up here before too long but that's my goal i'd like to be able to give my whole check away i'm going to write a book one day and have millions of dollars and i'll, I'll put all y'all's name in there and then your uncle's got to buy it you know what i'm saying so i'm not I, I, i'm not telling you this to flaunt my uh flaunt about giving just this is a personal goal and desire i have i give now thank god I give now brother ray for more in a week than i used to get paid from the church the whole salary given to church and i want to be able to continue yeah. doing that um I'm, i've always been reluctant in talking and if this this first time i've ever really talked about giving right quick okay i've always been reluctant in giving uh number one is i know there are people who are sitting here that are in a critical need of touch of the Lord, and they don't need a preacher to stand up talking about money. You know what I'm saying? There's people every Sunday that come in here uh, to church, and they're coming to get touch of the Lord, and they don't need this long spiel. I've been in services where they took almost an hour uh, to take up offering, and I don't want to do that. So if you're here and you have a need, just push the pause button for just a second. We won't be here much longer, okay, on about giving. Second of all, I know there are people here that think all the church wants uh, is your money. Uh, I'm not really interested in your money, but I do want to change your attitude towards giving. As we learn to give and we learn to trust God, we'll be able to bless, bless His people and bless those in need. Do you know that Hosanna? We feed now. We feed now right at I think right at 300 people a month now. We we're, there's people come here left and right to have absolutely nothing, and so at Hosanna, you all, when you give to the church, and there we feed right at 300 people a month. I want you, and that's every month. They're they're coming here, and they're loaded all the way from the road, coming up here. So we're grateful for that. No, you know, if you're that in that mindset, know that we minister to right at 200 youth and children a week. And so uh, we're doing we're doing it. We're ministering to those in need. We're doing it here at the church. So you remember that. And then lastly, probably one of the biggest things that I I don't want to do is I don't like people giving with a bad attitude. I'd rather you just not give. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because that ain't the type of giving that God honors. God honors somebody who gives with the right heart and right with the right attitude. Amen. Uh, uh, so that's what we want. And let me say this: God is not ad, uh, God, uh, honored either by your stinginess. Amen. So as we enter into the whole point is as we enter, get ready, enter into the uh, season, the holidays. Y'all remember giving to the church. Amen. Um, and that way, I ain't got a bow beat and everything. Just remember giving to the church because it takes all our finances to get through like electric bill around here is like seventeen hundred dollars a month you know what i'm saying uh, to run all the different air so y'all remember you're giving and we pray that you bless let me say this we'll try to always be good stewards of your money we will love your children we will love your you and your people and we will love those who don't feel loved in this place and we that's what we want to do amen so as you give and know that that's going to go towards that in jesus name amen and when we're doing that we'll show the world amen we'll show the world how much we love god by our actions amen thank you so much for your giving if you would all the ushers come this way thank you for watching our live stream from hosanna family worship center we hope our broadcast is a blessing to you but did you know you could give to this ministry using your smartphone we call it text to give it's fast, safe, and secure. Simply text your offering of any amount to 662-318-3051. Hosanna will text you a receipt acknowledging your tax-deductible gift. Thank you in advance for your support. We now turn you back to our service. Well, I
I was going to get Will to play a verse because I like it so much, but never mind, y'all, thank you so much for it. I like a guitar. I don't know, huh? <laughs> Always, I, they, I took a guitar, let one guitar lesson, and uh, that kind of hurt the end of my finger, so I decided not to play that no more. And I'm kind of glad because I'd probably been in every honky-tonk there was in Louisiana, amen, trying to fulfill my dream, I guess, whatever that was, Amen. This young lady wanted to share something last week, and this service got a little crazy right quick, so we want to give her just a moment. A veteran, sir, and, uh, and that time, pretty awesome, amen. Good morning, everybody at Hosanna. Glad to see all y'all here. Good morning, Miss April. She has become one of my favorite people. <laughs> She's really sweet. I just wanted to tell y'all, you know, y'all may not know me, but God knows me. Amen. And I just wanted to share with y'all what God has done for me. I couldn't have done anything without God, so to God be the glory. I'm not tooting my horn, I'm tooting his horn. Before I received my blessing of three brain aneurysms and two strokes that put me in the chair, I accomplished many things. And I had always started at the bottom and worked my way up. And most of the time I ended up on top. But I'm just here to tell you, I haven't done anything close to what I've done from this chair. I've done more from this chair than I could have ever dreamed of doing before I received my blessing. God chose me and I'm so glad he did because I would be nobody. I would be nothing. And I'm everything. I am richer than Donald Trump. Did you know that? <laughs> Well, take it out of your pockets, darling. We need That's it around right. here, all right? That's right. And give it right on to Jose. There you go. I just want to let everybody know that God has been my guiding light. He has been my everything. I don't have a companion to share my life that he has given me with. But you know what? I have God to share it with. And that's Amen. far greater than anything else. Amen. I have wonderful sisters, and I have wonderful parents, and a great life with my kids. But I tell you what, when they say the apple don't fall far from the tree, I didn't believe until I, my three boys grew into three men, and my youngest recently tried to take his own life, and now he... And he didn't believe that God even existed. But now 
he says, Mama, there's got to be a God out there somewhere because I'm here. And he's working through his issues. He's in a mental facility, but he's hopefully going to be released in December. Amen. And then my middle son years ago claimed to be an atheist. And now he attends Hosanna with me Amen. on occasion. And he goes to work and and spreads God word, God's word and praises him. Amen. And then my oldest son, I hate to say it, but he was a fan of the marijuana. And he smoked marijuana. But you know what? Now he's now he's living in Colorado, where, they grow where where it's free. I mean, you know, a, it's 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 not against the law to smoke marijuana, and he quit. He's not smoking anymore, Man. from what he says. He lives where he can smoke it without worrying about the law, but he quit. Thank God, and God good. Yep, God's one. I won't take up any more of y'all's time, but I thought somebody might need to hear God's praises today. God bless y'all. Have a great day. Ali, you know, it's about like whatever you tell your children to do, they do the opposite. It's about like you had run from the law, smoking marijuana in Mississippi, get to our, our, uh, uh, Colorado and don't do it no more. That's about how, how it's about how our children are. Right. Yeah, we are, if right quick, just real quickly, we need the Grant family to come up right quick. We're going to do us a baby dedication. Yeah, stay. No, don't hold on. I don't need to hold them till I turn. I ain't got my regular lapel mic on. If y'all want to, hey, well, y'all can ease right around that. Well, I get, y'all can make it. We're just a little unbalanced here, but it'll be all right. One. All righty. Children are a gift from God. Psalms, Psalms 127.3 proclaims sons are a heritage from the Lord and children are, uh, are a reward from him. As believers, we are called to recognize that children belong first and foremost to God. And God in his goodness gives children as he gives to the parents. They not only have the awesome responsibility of caring for this gift, but also the wonderful privilege of enjoying the gift. I sure enjoyed being with my children and grandchildren. Because children belong to God and are given by, by grace as gifts to the parents, it is only proper and appropriate that children be dedicated back to God. We are told in 1 Samuel that Hannah presented her son Samuel to the Lord. In Luke 2.22, we read that Mary and Joseph brought their baby Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem in order to present him before the Lord. In the same way, Dakota and Brooke today bring Wade, uh, presenting first himself and then their son before the Lord our God. Dakota and Brooke, I call your attention to the commandment that God gives in Scripture. Uh, in Deuteronomy 6, 4 and 7 says, Tell us here tells us hear O Israel the Lord God is one love the Lord God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength these commandments that I give you today are upon your hearts impress them upon your children talk to them when you sit down at home when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up now take it from somebody who raised two daughters and I'm around kids all the time if you think sitting around the table is just talking about all all uh, Bible verses and not talking to them about everyday life. You know, there's going to come a time when mom and daddy do something wrong in front of them, and that's a great time to be able to model the forgiveness of the Lord and the goodness of the Lord. That's a, there's going to be time when they do stuff, and that's a time we sit around, maybe going fishing with him and different things like that. That's a time to be able to discuss with them. And so it can't be just done at the church. It's got to be done in that everyday life, and that's the joy of raising your children. And I used to tell my kids, I'll beat you and tell God you died. You do something crazy, all righty? So that's, that's, one, that's one. I'll break your legs, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I'll take your cat from you, your car from you, your cell phone for everything else, all righty? Uh, if you start acting crazy around me, you don't have to do that. That's just what I did, all righty? 
Dakota and Brooke, love God with uh, every ounce of energy that you have, have, and teach Wade to do the same. As you love God and one another, you will model before Wade a wonderful love for God that, uh, that he will want for himself. Uh, if you would, when I get finished saying this, say we do, all right? Uh, if you want to, all right? Dakota and Brooke, by coming forward before God and his people, do you hereby declare your desire to dedicate yourself to Wade, to the Lord? If so, please respond by saying we do. Having coming freely, I ask now that you enter into the following commitment in the presence of God and his people so that Wade may walk in abundant life that Christ offers. Do you, Dakota and Brooke, vow by God's help in partnership with the church to provide Wade with a Christian home of love and peace, to raise him in the truth of the Lord's instruction and discipline, and to encourage him to one day trust Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord? All righty. For encouragement and fulfilling these vows, Dakota and Brooke call upon the grandparents. Uh, Proverbs 17.6 uh, declares how grandchildren are a crown of the age. There is a great pride in seeing a new generation in the family and how that joy is reinforced when children are raised in the fear of the Lord. To this end, I ask you the following questions. Do you hereby declare your desire to dedicate yourself to Wade, uh, de yourself and way to the lord if so please by respond by saying but we do we do finally i ask the friends and the church to make a vow as well there's an old proverb that says it takes a village to raise a child parents have the first responsibility but uh but the parents need the help and support of the community so i direct my question now to the church to the children's workers to all the different people here work in the church and of course those we worship together by being present in god's house today do you hereby declare yourselves to be children of god because you trust in jesus christ alone for forgiveness of sin and the gift of eternal life if this is true please respond by saying we do look at that see see how much they charge for babysitting right helping it, that kind of stuff too Let's pray this scripture real quick. Uh, Deuter, uh, uh, number 623 says, Tell Aaron and his sons to bless the people of Israel with this special blessing. Say, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Whenever Aaron and his sons bless the people of Israel in my name, I myself will bless them. Amen. Now, let's see if we can't do this without the baby crying right quick. All right. All righty. I'm going to sing a special now. No, I'm not. That was a joke. That was a joke. That was a joke. Me and Rayford don't sing specials too much. We just preach it. Amen. I, I had a busy uh, doing a tournament. Uh, last last tournament I'll be doing and balls fixing to be over with. So we did a tournament all day yesterday. And I think when a person stands up and preaches, they ought to be locked and low with both uh uh, arms ready to go, hands loaded. So uh, I asked Brother Rayford to share. I, he gets a little antsy when he don't get to preach and minister every so often. How many of y'all have ever had a phone call, had a visit, uh, had a visit at a hospital from Brother Rayford? Amen. Look at all that. Won't y'all give him a big clap as he comes and shares the Word of God? God wants us to know what the hope of our calling is. And everybody has a calling. And what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? The riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. 
Do you realize that you have great treasure on the inside of you? Christ in you is the hope of glory. If you're born again, you are a child of God, and God loves you, and God wants you to understand and know the hope of God's calling. And I'm going to be talking about that. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who believe according to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and set Him at His own right hand. See, we need to understand what Jesus is doing at the right hand of the Father. He's our high priest. He's our advocate with the Father. Most Christ, how many of you understand what it means to be an advocate? Jesus is our advocate. And he can't act as our advocate unless we ask him to forgive us of our sins and then he takes it before the Father and we're forgiven. And watch this. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet. Hath put all things under his feet. Well, if he put it all things under his feet, I'm, we're the body of Christ. It's under my feet. It's under our feet. He's given us power and authority over all the power of the enemy. And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. I want to read verse 18 and then we're going to pray and then I'm going to just speak the word of God. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your word that we might know by the power of the Spirit of God, the hope of God's calling that is in us. The hope of God's calling that is in every believer. And I thank you for giving us a spirit of wisdom and revelation into that this morning. That as we leave this place, we'll see ourselves different. We'll see you different. We'll see you as a loving Heavenly Father that sent your Son Jesus to die on the cross to give us eternal life. Because you said, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself. It's a gift of God. And Father, I thank you for that gift. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. All right. What is the hope of God's calling in our life? What is God's confident expectation of his children? What is God's confident expectation of his children? Tell them your name. Olivia Williams. Olivia? Olivia, I remember when she was born. She's just 14, right? Yes. And she told me the other day, I'm 14 and not me. And I believe that. I, God has a calling on this girl's life, and I've seen her grow. 
I've seen her mature. And I'm going to continue to watch you grow. God bless you. Now listen to this closely. We'll get out here by two or three. No, no, it won't be long. Now watch this. What is God's confident expectation of his children? To grow up and become wholehearted followers of God. Reach maturity. It's normal. It's normal for us to grow and mature. This couple's fixing to have a little baby here in about three or four weeks, I think. And we'll get to watch the baby grow. Now listen to this scripture out of Ephesians 4, verses 14 and 15, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. There's people out there that will deceive you, trick you, mess you up if you let them. But speaking the truth in love may grow up, may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Galatians 4.19 says, My little children, whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. There's a formation that should be taking place. This tells me that salvation is progressive. Salvation is progressive. You get born again. When a baby is born again, do you feed him a steak? It takes time for that child to grow. You, you breastfeed, you breastfeed, you bottle feed, you bottle feed. Well, whatever you, it starts out with a little milk. And the baby grows and matures. And after a while, you don't have to change the diapers anymore. <laughs> the baby stage, there's a whole lot of stinking going on. In the baby stage of a Christian, a lot of times, there's a whole lot of stink going on because of the way you talk and act and do until you grow up. Say, I want to grow up. I want to learn to be mature. Now listen to this. This tells me that salvation is progressive. Progressive means to make progress, improvement, growing and going forward, not backwards. When we get born again and become new creations in Christ Jesus, that is the new birth. That is the beginning of a new life in Christ Jesus. We are babes in Christ at that stage. How many of you, how many of you have been born again in the last, uh, say, month or two? Raise your hand. Okay, I see it. Now, don't think you're grown up overnight because you're not. It takes a while to grow. There is a growth process after we are born again. Is there a growth process after a child is born? We talked about that a minute ago. Yes. Let's look at Jesus who was born of a virgin and a babe lying in a manger. A little baby. Jesus. That, that's something, isn't it? Isaiah 9, 6 puts it this way. For unto us a child is born. For unto us a child is born. Jesus was born. And unto us a son is given. When was the son given? He was a child born. But there was a time that the son, mature, was given. Matthew 2, 40 puts it this way. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. At age 12, I remember reading where Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. 
Now, 30 years later, at age 30, after his birth, being 30 years of age, John the Baptist baptized him in the Jordan River. Matthew 3, 16 says it this way in 17. And he, Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending upon him like a dove and lighting up on him. And lo, the voice from heaven, whoo, listen to this now. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. From a child to a son. And the son means mature, ready to fulfill the call of God upon his life. All right. Again, what is God's confident expectation of his children? To grow and mature, right? That's the hope of God's calling on our lives. That we grow up and become like Jesus. Galatians 4.19 says, My little children, of whom I travail in birth again, until Christ be formed in you. There's a formation after we're born again. There's a formation that takes place and we become formed into the image of Jesus Christ. Amen? Romans 8.29 says, for who he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. This tells me that God wants many sons like his only begotten son. Sonship indicates full growth. God did not predestinate us as children to a state of childhood. Sonship is related to full growth and development into maturity and responsibility and responsibility. 1 Corinthians 13, 11 says of Paul, when I was a child, I act like a grown-up. He says, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. It's high time for the church to grow up and put childish ways behind them. I'm going to give you a childish way. Who do you think you are? You just a nothing, not a nobody. We do not have that right to tell anybody that if, because if she's born again, she's a child of God. We should honor them, love them, appreciate them, and respect them. How many ever ever, ever met a gossip? Oh, oh, ever? Gossip goblins here, gossip goblins there, or gossip a gossip box. Oh, hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awful. Let's quit gossip. That means you're a little bitty baby in Christ. You need to grow up. Now listen to this. A child has God's nature, but a mature son has God's character. And there is a big difference. A child is a peace breaker, a son is a peacemaker. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called he didn't say children, did he? The sons of God. A child is self-centered and is a taker. A son is a God-centered, is God-centered and is a giver. A child wants to be served, but a son makes himself a servant. Amen? Watch what Jesus said. Jesus said, for even I, the Son of Man, came here not to be served, but to serve others 
and to give my life as a ransom for others. Only a life lived for others is worth living. A child lives for himself. A son lives for others. A child is controlled by the flesh. A son is led and controlled by the spirit. Romans 8, 14 says, For as many as are led by the spirit, they're what? They're the sons of God. A child wants the father to please him. A son wants to please the father. A child wants his will to be done. A son wants the will of the father done. Amen? And watch this now. And what is the will of the Father for us to grow up and to be led by the Spirit of God? Because the Bible says they that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. And that son there in the Greek, it's the mature, full-grown child of God. Now, this is good. This is out of Philippians 4, 11 through 13, out of the Amplified Bible. Not that I am implying that I was in any personal want, for I have learned, <laughs> woo, I have learned. And many of you go say after this, I don't know whether I've learned that yet or not. Not that I am implying that I was in any personal want, for I have learned how to be content. Satisfied to the point where I'm not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state I am. Now watch this next verse. I know how to be abased and live humbly in straightened circumstances, and I know also how to enjoy plenty and live in abundance. I have learned, notice that again, I have learned in any and all circumstances the secret of facing every situation, whether well fed or going hungry, having a sufficiency and enough to spare, or going without and being in want. Listen to the next one now. I have strength for all things in Christ. I don't have strength for all things in my strength and power, but I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything, equal to anything, through him, through him, who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am not self-sufficient in my own sufficiency. I have a sufficiency in Christ Jesus. And notice he said twice, I've learned. I've learned. It's a process of learning. You don't learn it overnight. Paul counted on the greater one in him. You are probably asking, well, tell us how to grow up and become a mature Christian. I will tell you what Paul said in Romans 12, 1 and 2. I will tell you what Romans 12, 1 and 2 says. Now watch it. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Next one. And be not conformed to this world. One translation says, don't let this world shape you into its mold. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Transform by the renewing of my mind. What are you putting into your mind? Study to show yourself approved unto God. Jesus told the devil after he was uh, anointed 
with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Did you know this Bible works? Did Most of you said yes. This Bible works. But how does it work? You've got to put this to practice in your life. Just like Brother David preached on Sunday, meditate. Think on these things. What serve is true, just, and of good report. Think on these things. Meditate in the Word. But it takes more than meditation. You need to meditate, but you've got to learn to be doers of the Word and not just hearers only, deceiving your own self. Doers of the Word. Do what it says to do. Amen? Now look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to what? To the pulling down of strongholds. You know what a stronghold is? Any pattern of thinking that does not line up with the Word of God. Any pattern of thinking that does not line up with the Word of God. Do we get that? Watch this one now. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity or control, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought. Every thought. Have you ever had a thought about you like to kick that dude right where you know what? You have? Was that a good thought? That thought didn't line up with the Word of God, did it? Now, I know. I know. You have never had a bad thought. <laughs> oh, thou shalt not lie. <laughs> if we... If we're, if we're honest, we've all had some bad thoughts. But we've got to train ourselves, develop ourselves into thinking on these things whatsoever is true, just in the good report. Think on these things. Amen? Now, watch this. A child learns or a child murmurs about any discomfort, but a son, a mature Christian, learns to be content. Now, watch this, and we'll be closing in about two hours. No. no, in just a few more minutes. The mark of growing and experiencing God is that we learn to love God and love one another. When we first get married, I told Geraldine I loved her. And I, I did to a, probably a certain level. I'm being honest now. You can say you love them and then they say something wrong, you slap them side the head. Is that lo real love? Too loud. And I've heard to listen to her. The mark of growing and experiencing God is that we learn to love God and love one another. Love is a process of growth. 
after almost 56 years of being married to my wonderful wife, I'm telling you, I told her not long ago, I hope I go to heaven. I don't want to be by my way. <laughs> this tells me that learning to walk in love should be our priority, top priority in serving God. John 13, 34, and 35 says, And a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples because you love one another. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples because you gossip about your brother in Christ. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples because you wear the right clothes. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples because you go to a special kind of church. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples because you love one another. I'm fixing to tell you something that I believe will just God's love is perfected and brought to maturity in us as we love one another. He didn't say, say that you love one another, but experiencing and truly loving one another. No man hath seen God at any time. John, 1 John 4, 12 says, If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. This tells me that God's love is developed in my life by loving others. Therefore, walking in love should be our top priority in serving God. This will cause us to reach the hope of God's calling on our life, to be like Jesus and reach people for the kingdom of God. I'm closing with this. I've got this page and one more. Listen. I believe God, through us, can build a great church. Please listen to this. Because I believe God has ordained this church. God ordained this church on this hill up here to affect and minister to people in this community and around the world. I believe God, through us, can build a great church if we will join hands together, reaching out to people in love. We can build a place to mend broken hearts and to give those that have fallen a brand new start. A place where the sick can be healed, families restored, and God's glory revealed. A place where people can experience the power and the love of Christ. How many of you feel like you are loved in this place, that you are accepted, even though you have messed up and maybe still messing up some, but we want you to feel like you can come and talk to us and let's just grow in mature. A place where we can connect. How many of you read the uh, signs out in the uh, foyer? A place where we can connect, grow, serve, and lead. This is what this church is all about. We connect, we grow, we serve, and we lead. Connect. How many of you in, are connected to a life group? Raise your hand. Connect by getting uh, involved in that. Grow by studying the Word of God and in learning in that group. Serve. Helping serve in your life group and the church. And we got servers helping all over this church, and I thank God for that. And as you connect, you will grow and learn to serve, and then you will be ready to lead and start another life. It is called discipleship, making disciples, wholehearted followers of God. A place where people can be Loved, comforted, encouraged, and accepted. A place where each person is seen as important. Each person is seen as important, loved, equipped, 
and function in their gifts and calling. A place where God shows up and we can say, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. How many of you have sensed the presence of God in this place? Thank you. Thank you. This morning, Will you commit yourself to reaching God's goal for your life? If you are willing to commit yourself to becoming a wholehearted follower of God, raise both hands. If you're saying this to God, not me. And that is to grow up and be like Jesus, the hope of God's calling for our lives. Let's stand. God is in this place. He's here for you. We're here for you. The first step to maturity is to be born again. While every head is bowed and every eye is closed, if you're here this morning and you have not entered into the family of God and been born again, would you lift your hand? That tells me everybody is born again here in this place this morning. Father, I thank you for every individual here in this place this morning. I thank you that you called them, chosen them, and ordained them to bring forth fruit. I thank you that you'll use every leader, every life group leader, pastors, youth pastors, to help be before them to live a life that they will see Christ in us and want to mature and grow up. I thank you for our pastor and his wife, the praise and worship team, all the teachers, all the life group leaders. I thank you for every one of them. And Father, I thank you again for giving us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your Son that we might grow up and be wholehearted followers of God. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. So be it. God bless you.